j- j- just jobs. I have no idea what my career looks like in the next five years. Same amount of work for less hours. And like I just want to sleep, ma. I just want to get better. I want you to retain me. I want you to give me raises. I don't want to beat anybody. Just jobs and Ooh. how to be good at them. So today we are going to be talking about your careers, especially if you feel a bit lost, you're not certain where you want to go, you feel like your current job might be misaligned with your personal values. Uh-huh. And what do you do if you perhaps like your industry, but so you don't want to change a job, but you feel stagnant. So today we have Dr. Ramesh here with us. Ooh. Dr. Ramesh has close Welcome. to 10 years of experience in helping Whoa. individuals discover how they can progress in their careers. So he's currently a skills ambassador with Skills Future Singapore. Mm. As you can hear, he's a doctor. Uh, <laughs> Smart already. Doctor for your career. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks, thanks for having me here on the show. By the way, I'm not a med- medical doctor, but, but I guess uh, in, a, in a sense, I also uh, diagnose your career in some way. Exactly. <laughs> and then, same. probably also prescribe maybe the right course of action that, that you need need to take. Yeah, I guess maybe the doctor's title suits me also as a skills ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> So there was a recent study that was done by the Institute for Adult Learning, the IAL, on labor mobility. And they found like four main archetypes, which are stable achievers, adroit achievers, explorers, and early careerists. So today we're going to be focusing on early careerists. So maybe you are in your like second job or so. These people, right, they feel like they have weak career progression and they have less experience in job transitions as well. And they identified that one in four early careerists felt Mm. frozen in their career decision making Mm. states because their career self-management skills were among the weakest. 33.6% of the people who felt like they had weak career self-management skills were early careerists. And then the other aspect of that is career decision making readiness. So are you capable of making appropriate career choices while taking into account the complexity of external influences such as family, social, or economic factors. So when I was at the mm. age not too long ago, so then mm. <laughs> I, in, in the early stages of my mm. career, I will mm. always think that I don't know what I want to do because it feels like yeah, there no. are so many possibilities. Like I kind of stumbled into making mm. videos and then I ended up here. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, then I'll just do this. I feel like a lot of people struggle with even mm. identifying mm. what they like to begin with. I thought to myself that like, okay, from 20 to 25 years old, right? I'm going to go wherever I feel like I can learn the most. Mm. So regardless mm. of pay, regardless mm. of like, I don't know, I have to be a one-man show or whatever, right? Doesn't matter. So wherever I feel like I absorb the most, that's where mm. I will go. So that's what mm. guided my career decision for right. when I, until, up till I hit 25. Yeah, but I feel like that's where my vision kind of ended, mm. which is why when I hit 25, right, then I realized that, okay, now I'm in my second job. I have no idea what my career looks like in the next five years or in the next 10 years. And yeah. then I, I started feeling very lost at work. Do people come to you with such issues and then how would you mm. guide them through that? That's where then career, setting career goals come into place. You don't set career goals for yourself. It's like, you know, playing a, a football game without yeah. goalposts. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm just kicking right? it around. Yeah, you're right? just doing it. Okay. Doing sometimes it. Yeah. I have fun, ma. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, sometimes. It's, it's, yeah. But after yeah. all, you after ask yourself, what's the point? Yeah, what's the point? Where's the end point? <laughs> oh, true. All right, where's the end point? Huh? Who wins, who loses, draw or whatever. Uh-huh. So there, there, are no, there are no goalposts. All right. So this is a time at, at, at exactly at this stage after five years and you're 25, yeah. you should start setting career goals. And you may have heard of Simon Sinek's uh, golden circle. Mm, they start with circle. why. Because many like companies or people, they basically go the other way around first. Mm. They start with the what, they figure out the how, and then they reverse engineer why. Oh. When yes. you're saying you should begin with the why first, then everything else comes naturally. I'm naturally. so sorry, I'm seeing the spotlight. No worries, no worries. Yeah, so thanks uh, for elaborating on that. So the, the, no, the what and the how usually falls into place yeah. once the why is clear. Question. So I think for early careerists, a lot mm. of them, they are looking to, they're essentially at the start of their life, right? And then they're about to maybe get married, get a mm. house. And a lot of this goes mm. back to finances. Sure. So is finances a what or is it a why? Finances can be a why too, mm. which is also aligned to my personal values. Mm. Right? Right. So then I would want to seek a stable career in an organization that is able to fulfill this why, yeah. provide me financial security. Mm. So that's where as a, as a skills ambassador, yeah. right? I'll go through, okay, let's discuss right now. So I usually adopt a, like, it's like a four, four stage uh, circle. Yeah. The first stage, usually I, I will help you to discover yourself. Wow. Oh. I will provide you with tools and resources where you discover yourself. Set you on the right path. My son is uh, in his late 30s. Now what he did was he, he took a, a, a business degree 
mm. at okay. NUS. Right, because he wanted to go into a special area, but it was not available at the time. Okay. So got into degree, did media agency planning, marketing, mm. and he is at that time was a part-time DJ. Oh, okay. All right. To him, music is his happy space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, sometime uh, beginning of this year, uh, he comes to my room and say that uh, I'm leaving my job, oh. and I'm relocating to Bali. Wow. wow. To Your be Lord. a professional DJ. Oh. Wow. So just imagine my reaction at that point. Of Go time, back right? to yeah. school. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so yes, he, he was very good in his media sales and planning and so on. But mm. he felt that he needs to be in an, an environment where his creativity can flow. He can unlock his fullest potential. Mm. So he's been there six months. He came back last week, just renewed his work visa for another two years. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. wow. And so he fun. is wanting to upskill himself on what else can I do besides spinning and making sure my party goes have a good time. <laughs> so set career goals for himself. So he set a goal, he has set a goal for himself that in two years' time in Bali, I am going to set up my own Club. pool of pool oh. of DJs. I see. Right? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And this is, as you say, he's in happy, he's his happy space now. Oh, wow. Oh, he found his ikigai. He yeah. found his ikigai. That's yes. Good. A good way is to actually discover, discover your strengths, discover your personality, what, what interests you. So that's where I, I will probably then go to the next stage where I get you to explore options. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Because right now you may not, if you don't have options in, in front of you, then you, you can't set career goals. You don't know what you don't, you don't know. know. You don't know where you want to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a set of, of direction before you set your compass. Options as in? Options. So like options as in uh, right now uh, in the skills future framework, sometime actually in 2016, the Ministry of Trade Industry, what they did was they did a industrial transformation maps yeah. exercise. Okay. You know, right? For all, right now there are about 36 skills frameworks. Okay. So ranging from arts all the way to media, to infocom, to wholesale trade. Each of these sectors actually has a, in place a career pathway. Oh! oh wow. hey, where is oh. all this cheat sheet last time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2016, this was last time. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I yeah. haven't yet. So, so, yeah. 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 In 2016. so they took about, I think they completed this about, they took about five years industry by industry. You know, I think the recent one was added one for arts. Yeah. Right? Mm. You know, uh, who could imagine that arts has a skills framework in place? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have different domain sectors. Finally, the artists yeah. don't have to be starving. Yeah. Especially by MTI even. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and most interestingly, uh, the latest one that has come in is agri-food. So green economy, you know, jobs that we have never heard of before are coming into place now, mm. such as carbon footprint manager. Oh, hey, wow. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like a like great... Like you score with one, <laughs> they use plastic. Use plastic. You're like, yeah. you Stop hit it. your yeah. private jet limit this month. Yeah. So now it's my turn. What yeah. is that plastic doing here? So all these various uh, industries uh, have... Uh, there are domain sectors. For example, if you want to go into IT, you may look at, let's say, cybersecurity, you may look at data mm -hmm. analytics, you may even look at business development, for example. Okay. So that is then aligned to your strengths. If, you're, if you're, you decide that uh, you took an assessment and you are very enterprising in nature, yeah. for example, so then I may want to look at a business development role in the IT sector. The, right. the thing that I really like about, and you mentioned that this mm. test is called the RIA SEC, right? R I A S E C. I have what it stands for yeah. realistic, investigative, right. artistic, social, enterprise pricing and conventional. Yeah, like like what I like about this is mm. two things. One is what I'm hearing mm. is that it's not as though skills future, which by extension is like mm. the government, is coming in and saying we want to pursue these five industries, make sure everyone is skilled in these five no. industries go. It's that whoever comes, mm. we are going to cater based on your strengths, mm. your values, your interests. Yeah. And I think the other thing about this test also is that I mean we briefly look at the questions mm. is that it helps you save a lot of time because personally for me, I took like five to six years to discover what my mm. interest is. I always had to straddle between two things, what I was good at and what I liked and they never really aligned, aligned mm. right? And so I was very good in numbers like in uni and in school, I was good with like the finance stuff, accounting stuff, economics, but my love and my heart was always in like the arts. I thought by doing a double major, finance, marketing, get to blend the two, but in the end, when you do a job, when you join a role, you really have to pick one. Ma. Mm. And so then my path kind of ended up in like a sales role. Mm. And that was kind of the path that I took. And I was very fortunate that here at Gravity, like, I managed to speak to the bosses and like they were able to kind of 
afford me the chance to take on more creativity. Um, I think I actually had a very distinct career shift from business development director or manager or whatever to like uh, content lead for a period of two years and to really just pursue what my vision was for like the content across like gravity media due to natural like turnover the current sales team at that point of time um two of them left and there was vacancy then both john and jackie were like then can you please come back and like lead the sales team and like to me i was very hesitant at the time but i realized that now that i was equipped with the creativity from like working on the content side of things that now i can bring all of that into the sales role and be more than just a salesperson I negotiated to be like a, a strategist. Mm. So then I'm working on not just delivering sales, but delivering sales through strong strategy, like pictures and stuff like that. And one thing that I then discovered, and it took me six years to realize this, was that that social element was so important to me. The the mentoring, the guiding, guiding. the managing people was mm. an element that I thought I didn't like. I thought that mm. I was someone that prefers to work alone. Mm. Right. And then when I suddenly had this team right, and I realized I was so invested in all their growth, I realized, oh my God, this is so important to me now. And like in all future roles, I need to have that. To have that. Mm. Mm. So now if this test can do that for me mm. in like 45 minutes, yes. I know that sounds daunting, but it's better than- <laughs> No, it's 45 minutes yeah. because there are three tests to take. So there's a career interest, yeah. skills assessment, and then work values. Oh. Right, yeah. right. And the work values was actually quite interesting. So I, I went to click, click, click and see also. So it was, I mean, then would then resonate with the, how important is a job where I have good interaction with fellow workers. Wow, crucial. Oh. Yeah, so then you can say Vital. not important or like crucial. Right. And then yeah, yeah. Um, when I actually did the career interest test, at first I thought it was kind of like fluffy because I mean, it's so broad. Like what you mentioned, there are 36 mm. industry frameworks, right? Then how do I go about this? And then the first question that popped up was uh, leading, so from strongly dislike to strongly like, um, do you like to lead a group of international representatives? To me, it sounds like uh, maybe there is a diplomatic visit oh, like, yeah, to Singapore yeah. or what that I bring them around. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, then so I put strongly dislike. <laughs> 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 like, I feel like it's just not me. Right. Like, I cannot be so proper that I like, you know, wear a suit oh. or whatever, go to work. Okay? Then after that, I see the questions, right? Then I keep feeling like some of this is like, do I like to work with families who are needy or poor? Then I feel like, hmm, like it. I've done projects where we've gotten to work with them and uplift yeah. them and I kind of enjoy that. But then mm. it's not say to the extent that I want to go and be a social worker. Mm. And at the same time, I'm also not sure. Maybe I would really like being a social worker. So I wasn't really sure that right. I thought that oh yeah, then I'm going to end up clicking, clicking neutral for every single one, right? Which as I scroll, you can see that I'm putting yeah. neutral. Mm. But then all of a sudden, there's a question that came up, oh, do you like to write lyrics for a song, for example? Then I'm like, oh, oh, actually, that, yes, yeah. that's quite yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. So then I realized, ah, that's the point of this quiz. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's very clear, like what immediately I would like to do. And because yes. they break it down to like such uh, clear steps, right? Yeah. Then they can also help to identify at which part of this industry perhaps do you also then like. I was telling Dan also, the skills assessment was quite funny because there was a question that they asked, uh, from cannot do at all <laughs> to completely certain I can do. Uh. Again, right? This is not your skill. It's whether you certain you can do it. Yeah. The question right, is control air traffic at a busy airport. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like, like, I think can. I think can, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so in there, I put slightly certain. <laughs> <laughs> so it was actually quite helpful. Then they will aggregate your scores from mm. these three different sections mm. of tests to see what you oh. come out with your rising score. Yeah, I think it's exactly that because again, it's a cliche, but you really don't know what you don't know and you need mm. it to like it flashed up in front of you and have that almost like the mm. jump up moment like, oh, yes, yeah, I think I can to really mm. help you realize and also of mm. course the score also helps mm. you guide both the conversation with yourself, but also with um, your skills ambassador if yeah. you should like decide to have that session. Mm. Uh, there were no formal assessments at that time, but right now there is actually a formal assessment that you can take, which is available on my skills future portal. Another Early, early career I had met, yeah. was about 26 years old. Okay. And did, uh, was in, actually in a, in a HR role, uh, took her real zag, and actually found out that she's, actually, she, she's very creative in writing. Oh, okay. Right? And she had no idea before that. And she had no idea before that. <laughs> then she started writing blogs. And her name and, is and, and, and <laughs> 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 Went into wee blogs, uh, okay. did a bit of content marketing and so on. Okay. And got, got hit hunted by a lifestyle magazine. Wow. Okay. Right. She's uh, now a digital nomad operating from Malaga, Spain. Whoa. 
that will do it. <laughs> wow. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I guess you all know what a digital nomad is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. yeah. So, so, nomads, but digital. digital. Yeah, digital. So, <laughs> yeah. so she works remote, right? She Her, her laptop is the office. In the last I heard, in two years' time, she plans to move to St. Petersburg in, in Russia. In Russia. Yeah. It all started from that, that rise act. That un- understanding yourself. Mm. And not only understanding, but then after knowing myself, okay, this is the areas that if I'm, I'm good in writing, I'm good in content, but do I have the skills, confidence? Yeah. All right. And then what are the options available to me? Do I go into media? Do I go into uh, digital marketing? Do right. I go into, if, if you say that I, I, you know, I, my, my S score is very high, mm-hmm. I'm a, I, I might do well in the social service sector. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I might even go into being an early childhood teacher. Okay. Yeah, and, and maybe uh, you know my my why is you know I want to be there for special needs students. Yeah. Mm. All right. So can I? Uh, so that's where the skills framework will actually guide you. That okay, these are the skills and competencies that are required for a particular job role. So there's actually a, a very nice Excel spreadsheet that you can download. Mm. So it's almost like a roadmap. Also roadmap. It's like a it's like a game where you see where the yes. yeah your all EXP right. can all right. take you. So then then we do a skills inventory. Mm. All right. I may have a set skills of inventory. right now I may I may be a digital marketer and mm. I have this set of skills right now. Yeah. All right. And now I want to go into operations for example, mm. right? Or I want to go into data analytics yeah. because I want to do my marketing job better. What are the skill sets that are missing right now? Uh, so that's one of the, actually the pain points of early careers. They don't know where are their skill gaps. Yeah, yeah. I think that was me when I was freelancing. Okay. All right. So I left, um, after I left my job, I didn't have a backup job. <laughs> okay, no plan so, so that was my discover myself era. Right? Uh, right. Yes. So, because I was a freelancer, right? And sure. I was most confident in editing. All right. But I realized like, by only focusing on editing, I was limiting myself mm-hmm. to other jobs that I could take, but I don't have the skill set skill for. Set. During that time, right, I did take out some skill mm-hmm. future courses, okay. oh. but yeah. I also went on like YouTube to mm-hmm. do like tutorials, like three to five hours sure. a day, because I had the freedom of time. Mm-hmm. La. But I was thinking like, because I'm employed now, right? Mm-hmm. But then I don't have that time. A As skill, at the end la. of the day, mm-hmm. you are tired, you don't go like, mm-hmm. I'm going to follow a three yeah. hour course after yeah. I go home. Like, I just want to sleep. Ma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was there. Like, how do I, you know, upskill myself if I feel like I have no, it's not a priority in my life. Like, mm. do I still need mm. to, like, think about upskilling mm. myself? Mm. That's where the, then the next stage comes in, where you need to make choices. Yeah, so you, once you have options in front of you, right, then uh, some, and one or two of these options may be also flexible learning options. Mm. Okay. All right, so right now, what is, uh, there is this concept of called micro learning. Yeah. It's like oh, micro right. dosing, learning. but in learning. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like learning on the go. All right, you, okay. let's say, uh, and it's also skills future eligible. You can actually subscribe to a micro learning site. Okay. Right? And you have access to thousands of courses where you can just download onto your mobile phone. And like you said, you, you had to specifically, uh, let's say lesson one is about creating a, creating a graphic design document, for okay. example. So it's like a 10 minutes lesson for you. Or oh, like you can watch on the oh, yes, MRT you can just China. Yeah, so the, the micro learning, the advantage is comes in different forms. Mm. You know, it could be a tutorial, it could be video, it could be uh, print shots, or it could be a document, or it could be an Excel spreadsheet for you to mm. work on. Which is like yeah. just perfect for like a commute, yes, like a really commute. short burst yeah. of time. Yeah. Even if you still decide on long-term courses, you feel that, okay, <clears throat> uh, in, in your case, let's say you need to upskill yourself in certain design software mm. and you need to complete probably, let's say, a six-week part-time program. Mm-hmm. All right, then? Oh, wow. Do a bit of time management. Okay. Right, okay. <laughs> I, I need to work on it. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. So, so, there is a course on yeah, time management. Yeah. So oh. that that motivation about How you know uh, having a goal that I want to get there. Okay. All right. And these are cho- the choices that I need I, yeah. I need to make. Mm. All right. Then once I make a choice that this is what I want to do, then the that is the last stage of the process that commit. Mm. Commit to action. Right. Yeah, this is this <laughs> this is the course that I want to take. I okay. need to take it. It's six months. It's part time. I need two evenings uh, a week. Mm. All right, maybe one Saturday a month. And by uh, achieving this certification in this pro- programming software or design software, I will be able to aim for a role in my current organization, which is a it could be a step up. 
uh, it doesn't have to be always a step up. It could also be a lateral move. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, making a lateral move in the organization uh, allows you to then move up diagonally. Oh. Which actually brings me to my yeah, next question. Sure. I think like a lot of times in a lot of um, companies or organizations, mm. right, mm. The, the view from management is mm. that your growth path always leads to some form of management or leadership role. But the mm. problem is that not everyone wants to be a manager, a manager or, or leader. Or leader yes. right? yeah. Some people just want to go deeper and deeper and deeper yes. into mm. that mm. particular role. Mm. And so then, like, what, what does that look like? Is that a realistic um, expectation from an employee to say mm. that I just want to get better, I want you to retain me, I want mm. you to give me raises, mm. I don't want to lead anybody? So there, there are two perspectives, all right? In some organizations, you may be at a role where you may be stagnant because you don't have leadership potential. Yeah. Okay. All right. That could be one perspective. So that's where then uh, critical core skills come into play. All right. So critical core skills, we used to be known as soft skills. Oh, right. Right. Okay. Right. Got it. So, right. Soft was too soft. Yeah. So we like, critical like core. Like communication. Communication, okay. yeah. So actually similar to Razak, we, we actually have an, an, a self-assessment tool. Okay. Uh, which is uh, called a critical core skills uh, profiling. There have been 16 core skills that have been identified. Yeah. It could be communication, as you say, leadership, emo yeah, emotional, adaptability, learning agility. So you actually take this quiz and and it helps you to say, in my current organization, I need this leadership skill, how important it is in my current role. Okay. And uh, what is my confidence level in this skill? Okay. Hmm. All important. right. So it gives you a very nice detailed report. And where are your gaps? Yeah. All right. And if I, if I identify that presentation skills is, is I have a gap here. Mm. So I can take a short skills feature course. Yeah. Eligible that allows me. So that's if you want to progress to a leadership position. I yeah. didn't even know there were all these. Um, uh. like I always think of skills feature as like, mm. for example, if I go and learn to be like electrician or technician mm. engineering, mm. right? Then mm. I go. Then it's like a very serious thing. Then, okay, not saying uh. their courses not uh. serious, uh. La, but I didn't know there were all these like mm. critical yeah. core mm. skills. Or yeah. even I think um, mm. Edison was sharing, mm. she went to learn Korean on oh, skills feature. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the skills feature uh. free credits just came out, right? Yeah. Then I was like, that excited because like free money, right? Yeah. Then I want to use my <laughs> on my first day of the class, right? I remember when everybody on their camera, then I realized like, eh, hey, I thought only young people would apply. It's like there were like a variety of like at least like a 50 plus, mm. 60 plus like auntie, Whoa. uncles, Yo, right? Diverse. Mm. And I think like they mm. asked like a question, oh, mm. why do you want to take this course? Mm. And some of them said like, oh, they really like Korean drama. Korean then they just want to watch, exactly. you know? Yeah. No, but you know what's so interesting? So there was a point of time in which I think a lot of people looked down on like, oh, why, why, why are you wasting your skills future credits on like, flower arrangement, mm. making Korean. Mm. But actually, right, if you <laughs> take on a fun. skill mm. based on your own interest, I want to watch K-drama, mm. I want to understand, mm. I want to turn off the subtitles, very mm. annoying, right? But then you never know, it might actually help you in your job. Suddenly yeah. your company wants to expand in Korea mm. or you want to have like, want you suddenly have a Korean client. Mm. Suddenly you're like, eh, I can take that on. Yeah. And you suddenly become so much more like valuable that you didn't realize you were. Yeah. I have a question about sure. something that Dan asked mm. that is a bit of a parallel because right. he was saying that maybe not everybody is up for that management role. Yes. Right? And I think nowadays the culture mm. also is mm. no longer like hustle culture, ascend the corporate ladder. In fact, yeah, now yeah. people want to descend mm. the corporate ladder. You know, sure. they want to, what is the minimum I can do? And mm. simplify. Like mm. if I'm like this, right, then why should I even go and upskill? Like, I don't mm. have a need to go and do this. I just want to do the bare minimum so that mm. I can can have that work-life balance. Yeah, they just then how flow. Coming to that second perspective, the first perspective where I shared, someone wants to go in the leadership position, but it's not, it may not be for everyone. Mm. Yeah, right? I don't want to be part of this toxic hustle culture, mm. which is uh, basically at the end of the day, yes, the goal is still work-life balance, but at what expense? Mm. And mostly, most of the time, it's at the expense of your personal and mental, uh, mental well-being. Mm. Yeah. Right? And that's where then we look at it from perspective of cross-skilling yourself. Right? Look out for opportunities in your organization mm. where I, if I can upskill myself to improve certain business processes. For example, mm. right now I may be in this role where I, I need to fulfill these KPIs. Mm. Right? But if by upskilling myself, mm. I'm able to be more efficient Right. more effective, right. do the same amount of work and less hours. Isn't that great for the organization? And for yeah. myself, and for myself, home days. Because, yeah, because then I'm able to, you know, instead of having one uh, dinner with the family day, I can have it every day. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I was going to say yeah. like, same amount of work for less hours. Less hours. So it's all about transforming 
Yeah. The mindset from a hustle culture mm. to one which is a growth mindset. Continuous learning, continuous upskilling uh, for my own personal well-being so that I'm well enough to contribute to my organization. Mm. And in return, I get fair fair rewards. So the, the, the mm. point is that essentially, mm. even though it's almost like a cliche that um, most growth tracks involve some, for, some form of like management or leadership role. Actually, that's not the case because if you're able to upskill yourself yes. and almost create hybrid roles yes. or, or wear double hats or whatnot, right. and it's not about taking on like double, like two different jobs, no. it's that you get fairly competitive because you become almost integral. The company almost maybe shapes a role around you. Yes. Oh. Mm-hmm. yes. I think it's also interesting because people always think of upskilling as like a, I go for a two month long course and then I, yeah. I now mm. acquire this new skill. Mm. But mm. Ding, based on what mm. uh, Dr. Ramesh has shared, mm. right? It's essentially like, how can I make this part of my job like mm. better? You know? Yes. <laughs> it's oh, like, like, like helping, micro, yeah. micro. And then after that, when I look at it, it's like, oh, I actually have upskilled. Like now I can do Adobe After Effects. Yeah, mm. and it's almost better for you. It's better for me. Mm. Like if it makes me more efficient, again, more more hours for myself. Mm. And then the company is also happy because you're a lot more productive. And then productive. you can negotiate a race. Exactly. Because cool. you have more skill. Maybe you can give me some advice because I feel like I'm at a point in my career where I have gone very deep into a very specific area area of media and advertising. And now, right, I'm kind of interested in, I, I'm only 25 and mm. I kind of realized that, you know, I have 40 years of my life ahead of me to work also, right? And I don't know what I want to do next. Everything that I do, right, has been related to just make video, social media, make video, social media. And then now I'm realizing I have not really taken a look at this uh, parallel aspects of my of my career or of my industry and mm. I feel a bit stuck. Do you have people that come to you with this issue and how, how would you help them? It's good sometimes to be at the stage where you are, where you are in comfort zone, mm. right? You you are stable in your career. Yes. It's, it's good to be stable and that's that's extremely valuable. Uh, if you have heard the story about this uh, boiling frog syndrome, mm. all right? Yeah. So, I hate frog. You hate frogs. Okay. Yeah, like my phobia. <laughs> oh, okay. so don't, don't be that. <laughs> I cannot be a boiling frog. So That's a bad thing. Oh. Yeah, it's a bad thing because a frog, when you put a frog in boiling water, right? <laughs> Right. As the water starts to boil, slowly the temperature increases. Yeah, it feels it like a jacuzzi. Yeah, it doesn't Comforting. feel the changes in temperature. It's until it becomes too late because when the frog is ready to jump out because now the water is too hot. You can't anymore because your legs are too weak. Already. Too late. It's too late. You become too complacent. It's that unfortunate frog that you do not like boils to death. Am I an unfortunate <laughs> frog right now? So to avoid being in this state of complacency, all right, it is it is time to start looking at what are op- other options available to me. It doesn't have to be a job switch. It doesn't have to be uh, even a career transition. Right. It's all about, this is what I do right now. I'm very good in this, mm-hmm. all right? Let me explore in this uh, then I go to the frame. If I'm in media right right now, let me go to the media framework. All right. Uh, right. Oh. Yeah. Right. I, I may be only in this dom- in this domain. You know, there could probably six domain sectors in media. I may be in this track right now, and I'm I'm, I'm at, at already at level six. Right. Right. And probably I may I may not be able to go to level seven, level eight because that's not where. I want to go right now. Okay. Right. But you have a skill tree and your skill tree looks incredibly concentrated into yes, one thing. Into one thing. Right. Yes. Yeah. So so as, as an example, uh, I had a client who was a print media professional, mm. but basically still a uh, traditional print. Like that boiling frog, you, you, just that I don't I don't need to upskill, I don't need to upgrade myself. Once the organization started, it did away with the print edition. Wow, the <gasps> bubbles are bubbling. When uh, fully digital online. Whoa. The right. time is ticking. Right. It, it, it started, okay, This I, I need to now catch up all, all my digital yeah. skills. But as he started to catch up, it went one more stage ahead again uh, in terms of uh, online content, uh, pay, pay per view services and yeah. so on, streaming and so on. So it was, uh, it's time I upskill myself. All right. So he started to take up uh, maybe search engine, digital marketing and so on. So got into a, a new role in the organization yeah. where he's now in charge of the uh, online delivery services for content creation. Right. Oh. Yeah. Took a slight step down. Sure. Uh, and that is part of, part, of, part of the game right now because you didn't upskill yourself in time. Yeah. He uh, was a bit late. Like. He was, he a, was bit a bit late. late game, yeah, yeah. But he made himself he made him, yes. um, he, retainable almost. Yes. And, and as they always say, for companies, it's always cheaper to retain an employee than to hire yeah, someone yeah, new. Yeah. So he managed to jump out in time. Mm. All right. Uh, and probably now exploring what else can I do okay. to stay ahead of the game. 
So mm. the last he I yes, the last <laughs> I heard, in, I was in touch <laughs> with him. Frog. He's actually starting to take up uh, an AI AI course. Look at him. He's addicted. Uh, right. <laughs> that, that how can he? Addicted yeah. to no, learning. How can he use uh, AI to improve his his current uh, hey, digital wow. content creation? Wow. Let's quickly go into skills future. You want a short term course in AI, mm. or you you need oh, a specific short term course yeah, in AI, or you need a specific course for yourself. For example, I'm in, I'm in this role right now, mm. and how can I use AI to help me do my job better. Mm. There will, will also be a, a specific role suited for your oh. upskilling. Oh, mm-hmm. that's like almost tailor made to you. Tailor to made you. to oh. yes, to what you want. To. So, mm. so setting this this upskilling training needs. What do I really need? And use my skills, future credits effectively and efficiently. Yeah, law, you have credits is future. <laughs> yeah. you see, no, I'm curious who are the people that are designing these courses. Like designing this to be able right, to right, tailor right. make this for oh, you. Oh, they, oh, so they actually, all these skills, future courses are, 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 it's kind of like a tripartite partnership oh. uh, with industry, yeah. uh, with training providers, yeah. Yeah, oh. and also uh, the the workers themselves. Yeah. Yeah, so it's all mm. coordinated. So it's, yeah. it's industry. So yeah. it's actually people who are using these things. It's the companies themselves, themselves. together with trainers. So people who are good at training people, training people coming yes. together. And, and the workforce. Something that is so underrated, which is really developing like almost a habit or a culture of like lifelong learning. Yeah. It's just constantly, and, and actually we all do it because mm. if we're watching YouTube and we're watching mm. like random micro mm. documentaries or we're watching Net Geo, there is a desire, innate desire for us to learn. It's just that we don't formalize it. Mm. We don't see Skills Future mm. and YouTube learn tutorials mm. as the same thing. When mm. it really is, mm. and that mm. that Skills Future course actually gives you a certification to go to either your current company or another company and say, "Hey, I can do this also." Mm. So it's really just about developing, nurturing, embracing your innate like learning habits and 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 embracing it essentially. Yes, it's good to continue to monitor market changes. Of course. Mm. You know, what's happening in the, the industry. Uh, right now with, with digital transformation, with uh, industry uh, 4.0, yeah. which is all about automation, robotics, right? You may be in a manufacturing environment for four or five years, but if you do not look around and realize that you know, part of my uh, company production is being automated. Yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah. Uh, I may be next. Things that uh, were seen as traditionally safe jobs, you just never know. Like overnight, yeah, it no. could overnight, just shift. Yes. So you really have to be proactive. Yeah. And that's the whole idea of upskilling. Uh, yes. uh, even if you're not looking for something new, it's just because that if that moment comes, yes. at least you are prepared to go yeah. and look for something else. So before we close today's episode, we would okay. just like to share about the painting, painting of, of the episode. episode. So if you don't already know, the Daily Catch-Up is a very proud partner of Shaping Hearts, an all-inclusive arts festival showcasing works from local artists with disabilities. So today Today's artwork is done by Raymond Tan Ki Huat. He's a tetraplegic and he painted this with his mouth. And speaking of upskilling and uh. continuously learning, he actually learned how to mouth paint via tutorials on the internet. Wow. And you know, it's so cute because you see these little lanterns and there's someone waving. Yeah, yeah. I actually quite like this specific piece. Ooh. So if you are looking to snatch this from me or um, other pieces of meaningful art, do check us out at Shaping Hearts Festival on the 19th of October at our Tampanese Hub. Give meaningful art a home. And I think hopefully what you can take away from our experiences and the very interesting case studies and advice that Dr. Ramesh has shared, mm. right, is, is that you don't only go and upskill when you all of a sudden realize you need to scramble mm, and then there's yeah. fear mm. of job security mm. and all this. But I mm. think that upskilling really helps to, like Dan mentioned, right, open up all these possibilities that you might not even know have existed or you might not even know you would have been interested in. Yeah. So thank you very much to Dr. Ramesh thank for you. joining thank us you today. Much. Thank you. We've come to the end of today's episode. Like share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm yeah. just curious what's the cuts that you brought. Ah, okay. Like, so I thought, I thought in case <laughs> we talk a little bit more about burnout. So there's actually an assessment tool, uh-huh. which is uh, known as a motivated skills uh, cut sort. So these are known as your actually your burnout skills. Burnout skills? So your burnout skills, uh, you actually you may be very good in that skills. Okay. But you actually dislike. Uh, yeah. So, essentially, what this helps you do is that you hmm. figure out what you actually like and know that you're highly proficient, so keep doing that. But yeah. if you lack like it, at least you know that these are areas that you can upskill in or areas yeah, for development. Yeah, yeah. Well, I top think tr- this uh, is yeah. one burnout deal. I see that you've gone ahead <laughs> and opened this deal. Deal, <laughs> deal with feelings. Deal with feelings, yeah. <laughs> it might be a skill that cause you burnout, correct? Yeah, it, it could be. A lot of uh, social workers uh, do experience burnout. Fun fact, yeah. my friend who is a prison psychologist, right? Mm. She They have a psychologist for them. 
Oh, yeah. Because yeah. prison psychologist, yeah. psychologist, yeah. Yeah. even the prison psychologist, psychologist, right? Probably has goes, a psychology. Yeah. Yeah. Then who does the master psychologist go to? It just continuing. Uh. Mm. Go back to the <laughs> prison psychologist. <laughs> mm.